is impossible to comprehend a being like Jesus unless you validate your own experience. Because that vibration only communicates through the parameter of our own experience. It does not communicate through the parameter of physical things like books or mental things like someone else telling you what that means. And in mysticism, the, the teachings are old. It says, if you want to come to me, come to me with your head in your hands. In other words, chop this off because it's useless. It's useless in this part of the journey, right? And so the first step, the very first step on the journey is to validate our own experience, which is the very first step taken away from us by any religion. A religion says your experience is not valid. In fact, you don't even have an ability to communicate directly with God. Sorry, but we'll do that for you, right? And in fact, your experience is so invalid, continually apologize for yourself and the way that you are because, you know, you're just born in a terrible state and there's nothing you can do about it. And maybe one day, you know, there'll be a point at which you may be able to have a better experience, but not now. But pay enough money, do enough stuff, we're going to get you there, right? We'll take care of it for you. Completely invalidate your experience. And it's based, for example, in the Christian, because all religions are like that. They're all about invalidating the experience. Um, otherwise, they couldn't exist. Because when a, a being is empowered, they don't need to follow any group or anybody. Once we actually validate our own experience, our teacher is internal. And so one of the greatest misquotes in our recent religious history is, I am the light, I am the way, none come to the Father but through me. One of the biggest misquotes ever, right? Because really it's my experience is the light, my experience is the way. I do not enter vibrational awareness unless I accept my experience as absolutely valid. So another way that that may have been said is, I am is the light, I am is the way. I do not enter the, come to the Father unless I go through the I am. And what is the I am to me? The I am in my relationship with myself is this expression. However, my emotional, mental, and physical experiences unfolding in this moment is the expression of the I am. And I have to accept that as valid and be able to communicate with that experience directly in order to receive the teaching. And the fact is, my teaching is different from yours and yours and yours and yours. My teaching is so tailored to me that it is, there is no way that I can take my teaching and put it on you. All I can do as a being, when I get that, is invite you into your teaching and say, accept your experience as valid. And this is a means by which you may communicate with your experience. But you have to believe your experience is true. But if I say, no, my experience is true, and this is what you need to do to have my experience, now we have a problem. Right? Remember when um, Carlos Castaneda came out with those extraordinary books? I don't know if any of you read Carlos Castaneda. And they really were extraordinary books because it gave us a whole different parameter by which to perceive reality and engage with it. And so everyone went after the Carlos Castaneda experience. And no one had it. And everyone said, no, he's a fraud. I didn't have it. It didn't happen to me, so it must be a fraud. Right? But actually, that was his experience. And if you enter the same journey, you will have a completely different experience. You'll have your experience. And the only people who got anything out of reading those books was if they really got that their experience was valid, not his experience. Right? And that's a problem, for example, about sharing too much about our experience. It's important to share the insights for those that are one to know, but our experience is not that valid to somebody else because it's my experience is tailored to me for my own teaching. So that's the first step on the journey to enter the heart and the vibrational is that my experience is absolutely valid. It's what I require. I know that my experience is valid. It's always what I require. Always. Right? It's not what I need and want. What I need and want is what the child is trying to get to feel better because its being is not valid. 
its doing has now has to become valid. So what I need and want is based on what I'm going to do so that I can be seen, so that I can be validated. Because being in the world as a child wasn't validated. Why? Because I'm born into a world that is run by doers. This is a world of doers who do things. What do the politicians say? I will do this for you. I will get this done. They're not saying, I will be, I will be presidential. No, they say, I will do something for you. It's all about doing. So when we're born into a world of doers doing, because we're born into a world of believing that you've, if you want to impact the causal point of your experience, you must either do something physical or something mental. Think about it. And the world is run, this is the God of this world right now, the mental body. That's why we are mental, right? And that's why the majority of our institutions and organizations are run by men. There are even organizations that believe that if you're a woman, you don't have a capacity to engage with God or even talk to anyone about the subject because you're a woman. That's how mental we've become. And there are people that believe that. That's how mental we are, right? And our politics, our religion, in fact, even if you want to be a woman and make it, if you want to be a woman and make it in the White House, you have to behave like a man. You have to behave like a man, because it's a man's world. <laughs> and what that means, it's the world of the mental body. It's the world of the mental body. And the mental body believes in doing. It has no point of reference for being. It has no point of reference whatsoever for being, as being val of any value, right? And doing has a beginning and an end, and it has results. And that's what the mental body does. What is the, why are we doing this? How long will it take? What am I going to get out of it? That's exactly how the mental body operates. And so when a child is born into a world like that, and it is just being, not a being, being, right? I'm just being here. Hello? Is anyone out here, right? Well, maybe I need to do something to get some attention, because I'm unseen, unless I'm doing something. All right, so then I start all my things that I need to do so that I, I'm here. So, I'm, so my being is valid. Otherwise, it's not valid, right? So this work, that's why we say this work is not about feeling better. The feeling better is a drive that comes from an, the imprint in the emotional body. And there is truth in all our religious writings. The truth is always there, because everything is the vibrational. It's just of whether we engage with it physically, mentally, or emotionally. And emotionally is the closest we get. Right, so the truth is always there. So when we're told the sins of the fathers are inherited by the children, that's the truth. It's just not the way it's given to us to make us feel bad about who and what we are, and that we're useless and broken. What it's saying is the emotional imprint from one generation is passed on to the next generation. It's called the human race, right? And the imprint is the baton and we run through time, right? And we pass it on to our children. Our children take it from us and they run. It's called the human race. <laughs> and, and so what's, what's extraordinary about this moment is that we can go, Err! what the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> right? Our parents couldn't, didn't have that opportunity. They didn't even know they were holding it. They completely identified with this, completely identified with this experience. Remember we said last night that when you're hypnotized and you're on stage doing your act, right? And here, this tells us that this is a teapot or this is a cookie jar. We believe the physical world and what it shows us. We believe it. Not only that, 
but we have no awareness of the vibrational whatsoever. In other words, the person on stage who's hypnotized, who's running around believing that that person is a cookie jar, and this person who now has been told that that person is a teapot, and they're running around doing this thing, and everyone in the audience is laughing, they're completely oblivious that five minutes ago they were sitting in the audience themselves, and they've got whole lives. That doesn't exist anymore, right? So the imprint is a state of hypnosis. It's a state of hypnosis. That's why that question, where are we now, is a really important question. And it's really not about the answer, because we're infatuated with answers. It's about the question. This work is about the question. Remember, the question is the causal point. The answer is the expression. We just need to ask the questions, the right questions. What are we? What is God for us? And where are we right now? We don't have to worry about answering the questions. Remember, ask and you will receive. Not ask and go and get. Right? There's a difference between ask and go and get and ask and receive. So what this work is about is awakening our capacity to receive. Awakening our capacity to receive. Everything is already given. Everything. The peace we seek, the love we seek, the, the, the feeling of, of the abundance, it's all given. But if a cup is upside down and you pour water on it, or if a cup has cracks in it, if it has, if we, if we have imprinting in us that causes us to go after what we need and want, believing that if I get that I will feel better, and that has nothing to do with what I require to evolve as a being, then even when I'm given what I require, I cannot see it. I, cannot, I won't accept it. I believe it should be another way. I won't validate my experience. And that's why the very first step in this journey is to validate our experience. Right, so that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to start looking at this experience that I'm having is valid. Don't anyone tell me it's not supposed to be happening this way. What is now, from this point, of validating my experience, it is, am I going to react to it, or am I going to respond to it? In other words, there is no other choice. There is no other choice. And it's not about easy either. Easy is overrated. <laughs> Don't go for easy. Easy will lead you into feeling better. It's easy to feel better. You can go onto the internet right now and order whatever pharmaceuticals you want. They'll be at your door in a couple of days. You take those, you'll feel better, I promise you. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy to feel better. It's, it's challenging to become better at feeling. That's the challenge. <laughs>